Welcome to Geraldine's Bible and Song Sharing. I am singer and songwriter Geraldine Peng. This program is to share or guide the lost in having a better understanding and personal relationship with our Lord God, Creator and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let's join me in today's Bible Messages. Thank you for joining me in sharing songs from my story concept album Moonstone City about my personal recovery. I am featuring this song titled The Good Man vs. The Pale Man and how the King James Version Bible had inspired me in writing this song. Let's take a listen to The Good Man vs. The Pale Man. <laughs> Bible verses warning us about spiritual evilness, wickedness, and Satan, who is also the serpent, dragon, and devil. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Ephesians 6 verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against 
principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6 verse 11 Put on the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Romans 16 verse 17 Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offences contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Matthew 16 verse 26 For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the past century, many Christian churches had been infiltrated with a false satanic mystery Babylonian spirit that goes back to fallen angels of Genesis chapter 6, whereby a group of angels who were called differently in different countries be it Kronos, the father of Zeus in Greece, also known as Osiris, or in Rome, Jupiter, Jove, whose son is Apollo, Helios, Titan, god of the sun. Apollo is the patron of Delphi, Pitian Apollo. Apollo was an oracular god, the prophetic deity of the Delphic oracle. The words oracular and oracle traces back to the Latin verb orar, which means to speak. Apollo's sister Artemis in Greece, or also known in Rome, Diana, or by other names in different regions, be it Astat, Guanyin, Queen of Heaven, the Roman Empire's version of Mary or Fatima, which is not of the King James Version Bible, Semiramis, wife of Nimrod, Isis in Egypt, Esteroth, Iana, the goddess of the Sumerians, and Ishtar, the goddess of the Babylonians and Assyrians. There had been many different lineages of these fallen angels. There were also different groups, be it the Olympians and the Titans and the Trojan War. These angels reveled against God Jesus Christ and came to earth and fornicated with earthly women who gave birth to giants, Nephilims, who were mighty men which were of old men of renown. They were hybrids then, as forbidden knowledge was imparted to mankind, be it the tainting of a human DNA genome. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. These giants started to eat the flesh of mankind. God was to bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. With Noah did God establish his covenant. And Noah came into the ark and his sons, and Noah's wife, and Noah's sons' wives. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort was brought into the ark, to be kept alive with Noah, and the living things shall be male and female. Of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall be kept alive. All food gathered for Noah and his family, and for those living things. One of the gifts is tongues, which means languages. As when apostles like Paul had travelled to distant lands, they could not understand the languages of these people. But our God Jesus Christ will, according to his will and time, provide miracles to edify non-believers. A possible scenario 
Apostle Paul would then be able to speak the language of those peoples suddenly, and an interpreter will speak in Paul's language. But the Apostle Paul's churches will coax and teach their ignorant followers to speak in aesthetic tongues or glossolalia, which is practiced by pagan religions that goes back to Apollo and the Oracle at Delphi. The Oracle at Delphi, aesthetic speech, is simply spoken unintelligible sounds that are mostly vowels. Aesthetic speech continued into the Roman era, which would indicate that members of the churches in Greece and Asia Minor would have been familiar with how the Oracle at Delphi worked. The shrine was to the Greek idol god Apollo. In response to someone's questions, a priestess would go into a frenzy and start a babbling speech. An attendant priest would then translate the gibberish into some glittering generalities that could in some way be understood as to answer the question. It is interesting to take note that the priestess, the Pitya, being a woman, is mentioned in Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Generally, Paul had pointed that when one speaks in a pagan unknown tongue or language, speaking in aesthetic tongues, a glossolalia is practiced by pagan religions that is not for edifying the church as they speak like a mad, insane, lunatic barbarian. That person is accountable to God as no man understands that person and that is a false spirit of pagan mystery Babylonian, Roman or Greek oracle of Delphi that has Egyptian pagan Babylonian roots. The very same church in Corinth Paul had to correct between 5 to 67 AD is revived again as many churches had been infiltrated by the same false spirit. In Revelation, the testimonies in Christ provided to John are sequences of events that had occurred in the time period of John's, which was a revival of satanic and demonic entities, the Roman Empire, Greek Empire, and the regions of Asia Minor continued in practices. And how this evil mystery of iniquity had been occurring and still manifests itself, be it through occurrences, events, worldly, e pluribus unum organizations, or peoples till this very day. The four horsemen in Revelation 6 verses 1 to 9 had been occurring with satanic spirits and parallels to demons and fallen angels in Genesis chapter 6, be it Apollo, Zeus, Artemis, and many other of their offsprings and muses. How the spirit of iniquity desires socialistic yet totally terrianist control through deceptions, be it false, worldly, earthly peace and security, that is not of our one and only Lord God Jesus Christ. It can even be in the form of pharmacia, which is equivalent to sorcery, magics, witchcraft, with evil chantings alongside using herbs and root cuttings, administration of drugs, spring of chemicals, genetic engineering that leads to forming hybrids, or DNA chromosome minglings. Revelation 6 verse 1 to 9 And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. 
And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, Measure a wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou heard not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. What is interesting is that in reference to the pale horseman, pale in Greek means chloros, pale green or yellowish green, C-H-L-O-R-O-S. Generally, worshipping the created instead of our creator and God, Jesus Christ. That self-will run right mentality, thinking we can save the planet or environment through our own means. Subtle and yet deceptive druid witchcraft wicked worship of nature, be it trees, plants, mountains, oceans, etc. In ancient Egypt, green was a symbol of regeneration and rebirth. In wall paintings, the ruler of the underworld Osiris was typically portrayed with a green face because green was a symbol of good health and rebirth. Palace of green facial makeup made with melchite were found in tombs. It was worn by both the living and dead, particularly around the eyes to protect them from so-called evil. Tombs also often contained small green amulets in the shape of scarab beetles made of malachite, which would protect and give vigour to the deceased. It also symbolised the sea, which was called the very green. The Romans had a greater appreciation for the colour green. It was the colour of Venus, the fallen angel, the goddess of gardens, vegetables and vineyards. The Romans made a fine green earth pigment, which was widely used in the wall paintings of Pompeii, Herculaneum, Lyon, Vison la Romaine, and other Roman cities. In the Middle Ages, the devil was usually shown as either red, black, or green. Dragons, meaning the devil, Satan, were usually green because they had the heads, claws, and tails of reptiles. Modern Chinese dragons are also often green, but unlike European dragons, they are supposedly revered as benevolent. Chinese dragons traditionally symbolize potent and auspicious powers, particularly control over water, rainfall, hurricane, and floods. The dragon is also a symbol of power, strength, and good luck. The Emperor of China usually used the dragon as a symbol of his imperial power and strength. The dragon dance is a popular feature of Chinese festivals. In Irish folklore and English folklore, the colour was sometimes associated with witchcraft and with fairies and spirits. The type of Irish fairy known as a leprechaun is commonly portrayed wearing a green suit. Alexander the Great and Antiochus Epiphanes were classic examples of Antichrist characters. Good reads and details in the Book of Maccabees, Part 1 and 2. Alexander the Great Alexander tamed the untamable horse and named it Bucephalus when he was only 11 or 12 years old. Bucephalus, the head, means ox head. Bucephalus died after the Battle of Hydaspes in 326 BC in what is now modern Pakistan and is buried in Jalapur Sharif outside of Jalum, Pakistan. Another account states that Basufalus is buried in Palia, a town in Pakistan's Mandi Bahaudin district, which is named after him. 
Bucephalus was named after a branding mark depicting an ox's head on his haunch. The value which Alexander placed on Bucephalus emulated his hero and supposed ancestor Achilles, who claimed that his horses were known to excel all others, for they are immortal. That Poseidon gave them to his father Peleus, who in his turn gave them to him. Arian states with one secretus as a source that Bucephalus died at the age of 30. Other sources, however, give us the cause of death, not old age or weariness, but fatal injuries at the Battle of the Hydaspes, June 326 BC, in which Alexander's army defeated King Porus. Alexander promptly founded a city, Bucephala, in honour of his horse. It lay on the west bank of the Hydaspes River, modern-day Jalum in Pakistan. The modern-day town of Jalapur Sharif, outside Jalum, is said to be where Bucephalus is. Alexander III of Macedon, known as Alexander the Great, 21st of July, 356 BC to 10 or 11 June, 323 BC, was the son of King Philip II of Macedon. During his youth, Alexander was tutored by the philosopher Aristotle from the age of 4 until the age of 16. After Philip's assassination in 336 BC, Alexander succeeded his father to the throne. Alexander tamed the untamable Bucephalus when he was only 11 or 12 years old. While it is clear that his father had a great impact on him, Alexander himself chose to see his success as ordained by divine forces. He called himself the son of the fallen angel Zeus, and so claimed the status of a demigod linking his bloodline to his two favourite heroes of antiquity, Achilles and Heracles, and modelling his behaviour after theirs. This belief in his divinity was instilled in him by Olympias, who also told him that his was a virgin birth as she had been miraculously impregnated by Zeus himself. Olympias, the mother of Alexander the Great, was a devout member of the orgiastic snake-worshipping cult of Dionysus, and it is suggested by the 1st century AD biographer Plutarch that she may have slept with snakes. Dionysus, also known as Bacchus, the name adopted by the Romans, as such that his parents were fallen angel Zeus and Zeus's earthly woman mistress named Semele. The cult of Dionysus is strongly associated with Satyr, Santos, Silene, and its characteristic symbols are the bull, the serpent, tiger leopards, the ivy, and the wine. At the Oracle of Siwa, he was proclaimed a son of the god Zeus Amon, which is a fallen angel. He died in Babylon at the age of 32 on the 10th or 11th of June, 323 BC, after suffering 10 days of high fever. Alexander the Great died in his 30s at the height of his power. His kingdom was split into four parts under four generals. Ptolemy I of Egypt and Palestine, Seleucus of Babylonia and Syria, Lysimachus of Asia Minor, and Antipater of Macedonia and Greece. Antiochus Epiphanes was a Greek king of the Seleucid Empire who reigned over Syria from 175 BC until 164 BC. Antiochus raided the temple in Jerusalem, stealing its treasures, setting up an altar to the fallen angel Zeus, and sacrificing swine on the altar. Once again, good reads and details in the Book of Maccabees, Part 1 and 2. So once again, the summary is such that Alexander Great and Antiochus Epiphanes were classic examples of Antichrist characters and how there had been an a constant revival or reset, temple of set, Satan, union togetherness of these very same fallen angels, sons of gods, old men of renown, mystery of iniquity spirits that had infiltrated the world and even these apostate false churches with their oracles of Delphi.
to Geraldine's Bible and Song Sharing with me, singer and songwriter Geraldine Peng. This program is supported and sponsored by listeners like you. For information, www.geraldinepng.com Now, until next time, remember, Jesus Christ is our Lord God, Creator and Savior.